There is also a mutation or influence resulting from the a reflection of light from the sun on the surface of the moon and its final uh, descent to the earth. This type of magnetism has been noted to be noxious and according to old magicians was used by sorcerers in the attainment of their diabolical end. The uh, magnetic field of the earth has been considered to some degree. We are not entirely unaware of it, nor have we forgotten what the Chinese learned when they experimented with the compass. We know that magnetic currents of some kind do exist, but for some reason we have never directly attempted to apply them to therapy, except in the case of a few extraordinary and regarded as deranged researchers. The magnetic field of the body itself may therefore be similarly described as that of the sun, namely that it is a fluidic material, fluidic to our comprehension, but probably not fluidic in its own nature. It gives the impression of a fluid, but it is far more subtle than any fluid that we know. I think Mesmer termed it fluidic because he perceived within the substance of it certain tidal motions, certain ebbing and flowing which we associate with a liquid of some kind. But it might just as well be associated with these magnetic patterns which seem to lie beneath the surface of frost pictures on a window pane. Mesmer was convinced that this magnetic material formed not only a natural field around man, but was to large measure the basis of a certain protection. In other words, a person in whom the magnetic field was strong and was normally sustained apparently had greater resistance against uh, the dangers of infection or many ailments which might otherwise afflict us. The um, reference to contagion and infection uh, is rather important. We must assume that all forms of bacterial life, regardless of their size or structure, are also magnetic units. This does not mean they have no other existence, but it does mean that anything that exists does possess magnetism as a means not only of its existence, but of its animation. Thus also, infection may be said to have a magnetic existence, and the corruption of flesh is a magnetic process just as surely as we might regard it as the result of poisoning, blood poisoning, or something of that nature. If, therefore, a person's magnetic field be strong, it is quite conceivable that it would repel the magnetic fields of bacterial organisms, causing some degree of immunity, if not complete immunity. And there are numerous records which cannot be explained of persons immune to ailments who may even be carriers of those ailments but will not be affected by them. There are also many interesting evidences and records such as that referred to by Sir Kenlon Digby, one of the great physicians of the first Elizabethan period, in connection with wounds and the development of his remedy, the weapon saw, by means of which he was able uh, to assist the healing of a wound by bestowing certain magnetic substances upon the weapon causing the wound. The possibility of the magnetic field of the human body serving as a protection against evil is possible and quite probable. Also, that this magnetic field 
uh, is further divided within itself so that miniature fields surround all the principal vital organs and parts of the body and that this magnetism moves in the marrow of the bones and that it also flows through the nervous system these uh, points are worth noting mesmer himself directly associated magnetism with the nervous system declaring that it uh, definitely circulated through the body uh, by means of the nerve and that they contain within themselves this mysterious semi-fluid substance uh, invisible and entirely absent, absent in the dead but available in the living and controllable by those who know, knew how to operate the magnetic laws uh, Mesmer went still further in affirming that the principal source of derangements within the body might be claimed to have magnetic origins. 